Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. And today's video, I had a request to go over a couple things. One was software that I use for digital illustration. Uh, and then another was more addressed towards the hardware. So I thought of this video where, you know, I'm going to show you the difference in the tools that I use. I utilize, obviously I'm using Photoshop CC here. Uh, great for any number of things, mainly digital painting. Uh, colorization of comic books but even drawing it's it's come a long ways as far as even drawing and even uh, getting a decent inking effect uh, but I do use different tools for that and I'll talk a little bit about that but the main topic or the main purpose of this uh, video is to show you the difference uh, I'm gonna draw a line right down the middle of this uh, screen here or frame or whatever and uh, I'm going to show you the difference of working on an Intuos 5 which I believe those are called the uh, Wacom uh, Pros or Intuos Pros now and the uh, the Cintiq that I use which is my big dog you know my favorite little toy here but there, there are definitely pros and cons to each and that's the purpose of this video so now I know I could show you an over-the-shoulder kind of shot of what it is to work with it but I don't want to do that I actually want to show you um, the reaction of me drawing. So you're going to see the difference of the way that I would draw on each one. And I'm not going to tell you right away which is which. I've got them both hooked up. You should be able to notice, you know, relatively easy. But uh, but I want to show you that there's, there's workarounds. Okay, the one on the right is the Cintiq. Okay, so I'll just throw that in there. Cintiq. I guess I'll even write Cintiq with the Intuos over here. So this, or I'm sorry, Intuos. So I want to show you the little subtle differences, you know, and that, you know, that they're not that far off. And then workarounds of what you could do to make each tool, you know, still work for you. Um, the main difference is this, obviously, you know, a lot of young artists, are, you know, ask me, you know, what do you, what tablet do you recommend? What's the cost? Things like that. The Intuos 5 series, like this, uh, the Pro or whatever is available now, um, I got mine for 250 somewhere in there, I want to say. So a noticeable difference from the, the 22 HD that I got, which costs over $2,000, somewhere around 2000 or $2,200. Um, so, so a big difference there. So for that difference, you have to justify, again, the one on the left, I'm going to be drawn with the Intuos, so... Uh, you have to justify the cost versus you know what you're using it for. If it's a if you're a hobbyist, you know obviously uh, you know the money is going to be more of a factor if you're not actually making money with it. And if you're you know a professional, then speed might be the issue. One of the reasons I jumped to the the Cintiq was I thought speed, right? It would allow me to be a lot more accurate, quicker, and make more money. Because uh, I'm a working artist, you know, I do storyboards, I do some paid comic book illustration work. I mainly just draw my own comic, Blackstone Eternal. You can find it on Indie Planet. Sorry, I've got to plug my my book inside these videos. Um, but yeah, so basically, you know, I was looking for speed and and accuracy. But you know, if you see right there, I mean, I'm not saying this is the most perfect circle. I can't draw a perfect circle for all my years of illustration. I cannot do a perfect circle. Um, but that's me working on the Intuos. Maybe it took a little bit longer. Now I'll go over here to the uh, the Cintiq and see if I can draw it a little bit faster. Now obviously there's tools inside the software where I could draw a circle extremely fast and this is just an exercise in futility. Um, the other thing is things like this are really good ways to hone in your skills anyways, you know, so you want to you wanna do little warm-ups and tests like this. So you can see that I was able to get to a decent circle a little bit faster on the Cintiq model. So that's going to be your, your major factor, you know, um, saving, you know, saving money. Uh, or I don't want to say saving money, I'm sorry. You're going to spend more money to be quicker, which in turn should make you more money. So that's, there's one particular instance of that. Now, I want to do pros and cons of each. One of the things that I would say about the Intuos, uh, right, five down here, Intuos 5, that's more um, beneficial, and I didn't think about this as simple as it is uh, until I had both, 
uh, the Intuos 5 is, well, well, one, portability. You're, you can plug it into your laptop and you can move all around the house, you know, um, which is great. Uh, it's the other thing is that your hand isn't in the way while you're drawing and there's certain things that excel because of that uh, one for me I prefer to actually digitally paint on this model here it's uh, and, I'll, and I'll show you something there real quick I'll just digitally paint um, something basic let me grab a hard round brush uh, turn the opacity and flow down so we got kind of a marker effect. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a bit of a cold here. Sorry about that. Spacing down. There we go. I like to look kind of like a smooth marker when I start building up with this. Okay. So something like this. And I'll just do, I don't know, just something quick. A nose. As I have a cold and my thought process is on noses right now. Um. And, you know, I think one of the reasons that, that this model lends itself to digital painting so well is, for one, with digital painting, you shouldn't be overly concerned with harsh lines. You kind of do a build-up process to create all your shadows and value and all that. So there's really not a need as much, you know, to, to do, a, you know, a nice, hard, particular line like that. I mean, you're going to do a little bit of that. And, and keep in mind that with enough practice on this model, you're going to be able to draw just like you draw anyways. I, I know a particular artist, I won't mention his name, um, you know who you are if you're listening. Uh, he does these amazing digital paintings and, uh, you know, does not use a Cintiq model. And I thought he did. I was actually asking him questions about settings and he's like, oh, I don't know, I never really used one. And I'm like, what? This guy's works amazing. So it's like, you know, you can overcome the uh, the feel. A lot of people try these models and they go, well, I can't get a straight line and it feels awkward. It's just learning how to use it differently. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, like reworking the mechanics of it to benefit you. But I think for digital painting, uh, for one, again, your hand's not in the way, so you're able to see your artwork. And in turn, that helps you move a lot faster. So that's, that's one where this one particularly excels in speed. Um, the other is that that uh, you know it's it's cheaper it's, it's more portable than than my 22 so th there's definitely some pros to utilizing this one now I'll come over to the other side and this is real rough obviously and they both react pretty much the same I'd say the uh, the Cintiq reacts a little bit better but they neither one have because I'm not talking about like the Companion or nothing like that. I'm talking about the Intuo series and the uh, the Cintiq. Uh, they both run off the the performance of the computer. So both of them respond pretty much identically as far as that goes. And if you're having a slow reaction time, uh, that's not these tablets or units or, or whatever. Sometimes it can be a driver issue, but nine times out of ten, it's your system you know itself and, and the way that you have things configured and you can just drop down the file sizes and get better reaction times if that's irking you as you're drawing or painting you know i'm getting a little bit of lag here but you got to figure i'm also recording the video I'm working on a 37 meg file and i'm smudging which is one of the more taxing aspects of uh, digital painting so you see i'm able to get a relatively you know decent nose there i mean the lighting's probably not correct. I, I gotta work on my lighting a little bit. You know, but I'm able to fill it in. And, and, and again, I think it lends itself to this process more because of the, the build-up process. You know, as to where, again, one of the reasons I got the Cintiq was, you know, I also illustrate comics and I, I ink a lot. You know, I do digital inking through uh, Manga Studio and stuff like that. So, essentially... For my, my harsh, uh, harder line work and my, you know, more refined inking lines, I definitely wanted that, you know, ability to really zero in on what I was drawing. So that's, where, again, where the Cintiq would excel just a little bit. Not that you couldn't overcome it. So now I'll do a similar sketch over here, and, you know, you can just see if it's any different to you. If you can notice the, uh, more the pinpoint accuracy kind of thing.
you know, pressure sensitivity is the same. I think they both run off 2048, I believe is the number. So 2048 uh, levels of pressure sensitivity. So both have that, which is great. Um, shoot, one thing that my Intuos 5 has that my Cintiq doesn't, uh, just based on the, the times that I bought them and what features each one had, uh, my my Intuos 5 is actually touch sensitive. I don't have it enabled um, at this moment, but you can grab the screen, move it around, all that good stuff. Um, I disable stuff like that. I disable the buttons on the pen, everything. I just, I really just want the drawing and, and the other stuff I don't use. I use keyboard shortcuts, so even the shortcuts on the system itself, I'm not a big fan of. I just don't, don't use them. I know a lot of guys probably think that's crazy. It's a huge time saver, but um, I'm pretty quick with the keyboard. I always have one hand on the keyboard and the other one on the screen. So, Yeah, see, and I think the other thing that almost happens by me using the Cintiq in this way is I tend to want to draw more. And that's basically probably from habit because I, you know, again, I use the one more for digital painting. I use the other more for my illustration and drawing. So that's probably just natural, you know, to what I've already been doing, habit forming or whatever. Sorry for the bad noses here, folks. And I'm trying to make them look relatively the same, but... So, yeah. So, you see that, you know, maybe the one, you know... Oh, sorry. I'm actually drawn on the Cintiq. I crossed over there. Um, you see that the one probably, you know, came about a little bit faster. Uh, but, you know, still relatively the same thing. Now, lastly, I don't want to get too lengthy with this. I just want to show you a basic understanding of the two. And I mainly want to show young artists that, hey, don't run right out and buy the big Cintiq. If you can't afford it, don't justify it and, and do it, you know. Because um, in all honesty, you can really come to about the same place with, yes, a little bit more effort and, and you know, of a struggle or, or whatever. But you can beat the mechanics of it. Uh, you always got to think about what other artists have you know, ascertained with the most basic of tools. So don't think that, you know, the bigger and better tool is going to just make you a better artist. You are the artist. You're the, <laughs> you're the tool, I guess. Um, okay. So in this next one, I just want to show you how you can, you know, do a different method. One of the things that got me better with the Intuos 5 was this right here. Um, I'll show you kind of how I would ink something because that was another big one where I almost, you know, just had to switch immediately because I wanted to, to uh, ink my comic book pages and now actually the Photoshop's gotten a lot better I use uh, Sketchbook Pro to draw Manga Studio to ink um, sometimes Sketchbook Pro to ink also and then Photoshop to uh, digitally paint but now Photoshop's actually getting really good where you can actually do all of it in here I mean that's a pretty good ink line right there it's just a brush I I don't know I found it or made it or whatever but it makes a great ink line Okay, so at first I'm trying to cross hatch, and I'm again I'm on the Intuos 5. I'm trying to cross hatch, and I've gotten better at it, but it was a lot worse, you know, over time, or not over time. Over time I got better, but you know, so that's not horrible, right? I mean, that's that looks like cross hatching. Um, but one of the things I had to get past was the fact that, you know, I I draw more of a downward pull is my my best like if I go side to side I'm gonna get a more inconsistent line and one of the other things is is if you're getting an inconsistent line you might be pulling too slow so you want to pull faster and get a smoother line so that's another thing but like I said like if I was doing some cross hatching we'll say that I had a shape I don't know top of a shoulder or something here's the bicep and the tricep and whatever all right this is in a drawing on anatomy so I'll get too far into that but um, and say I wanted to cross hatch and shadow up this way right well on this particular model if I'm having to pull sideways like this I can do it okay but that doesn't look the greatest I mean it looks kind of you know like I struggled there you know and ignore the outlines because I, I purposely drew those really bad but now before Photoshop didn't rotate now it does you hit R you can rotate it 
which is great for my style of drawing. But the other thing that I noticed with the in Tools 5 is that I had to do um, downward pulls to get a better line. Also, I like to feather my lines, so I do. I don't ever just draw one line. I kind of feather them like this. So I had to either rotate the screen and or do a downward pull on the uh, you know on the Wacom. I guess I had to rotate the screen so I could do a downward pull on the Intuos 5. So that's that's one of the things that allowed me to start getting better lines with it and then not feel like I had to have this bigger better model. Now the Cintiq allows me to do that and not rotate the screen as much. So again probably a time saver uh, and again a confidence thing because you can look at what you're drawing but you get past that like I'm not looking down at the tablet at all at this point you know I know right where the you know you could see the cursor too but uh, so you get in the habit of that but after you get started you can kind of feel the position of where it's at so so I guess that's it you know like you know I just figured out a way to make the mechanics of it work a little bit better or change the way that I was doing something on the tablet to get to the effect that I wanted because I really wanted to make you know like nicer uh, lines digital ink lines which are a little bit more well the style that I do them in a little bit more refined so that's how I came to grips with that using the Intuos 5 now if I come over here and do the same thing again it's gonna have a little bit more of a, a confidence level to it it's more natural to the way that I would you know do it on a, a sheet of paper And like right here, I probably don't have to rotate it. I can just turn my hand. So I don't know why I made the lines go off to the side like that, but whatever. And sorry folks, I really hate recording when I have a bit of a cold here, but you know, I promise you guys a video a week, and I want to make sure I at least live up to that. So, I am nothing if I am not a man of my word. That's you. Just kidding. That wasn't a real sneeze. Okay, actually, the one on the left to me looks a hair better, which is pretty bad. I'm going to sell my Cintiq then, so if anybody wants to buy a Cintiq. No, just kidding. All right, so that's my video. Hopefully, this has covered some things for you. Um, I just wanted to make sure, like I said, that I talked about this. I had some questions on it. I'm going to do a more in-depth uh, one about software. Uh, I had one where a gentleman asked me, okay, Rob, you know, what software and why? And like I just p talked to you a little bit about, you know, you've got basically, you know, Photoshop is great for digital painting. And they keep in mind, they can all do what the other ones do you know within reason and but some are going to be a little bit better than others so Photoshop is great for digital painting sketchbook pro is great for sketching go figure uh, and and even inking it's got some nice inking features now and great perspective tools love the perspective tools in sketchbook pro uh, 7 and then manga studio 5 uh, EX will do all that good perspective tools I wouldn't say great I would say good um, to great and then uh, great inking uh, decent drawing and one of the great things about Manga Studio is you can keep all your files in one unified document saved to one single PDF document which is great for digital comics and that's what I use it for to produce my comic upload it to Indie Planet and you know make millions of dollars yeah right but you know so that's the great thing about Manga Studio so and we'll get more into that I'll talk to you about each one of those and I'll sh maybe do a little quick demo of each one so uh, be sure to stop back and share the videos, like, subscribe, all that jazz. And I thank you for tuning in. Talk to you soon. Take care. Keep drawing. Keep having fun. Bye-bye.